And now, what's my line? Brought to you by Stop at Spray Deodorant. Poof, there goes perspiration. Poof Deodorant Body Powder, the body powder you spray. The Nest Shampoo, the new flowing cream shampoo. All in the first truly functional cosmetic containers, far easier to use. All created by Dr. Jules Montagnier, the famous cosmetic chemist. Time now to enjoy What's My Line? And now, let's meet our award-winning What's My Line panel. First, the popular columnist whose voice of Broadway appears in the New York Journal American and papers coast to coast, Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. Thank you. Thank you. On my left, a young gentleman who has a new record album that's going great guns all over the country. It's called Grim Fairy Tales for Hip Kids, Mr. Steve Allen. <laughs> Thank you, Thank you. And as the saying goes, I just happen to have a copy with me for you. <laughs> Thank you. And on my left, one of the wittiest and prettiest in television, Arlene Francis. Well, thank you very much. And on my left, another witty fellow, the witty publisher and dog fancier of Mont Kisco, Mr. Bennett Surf. <laughs> dog fancier? You mean fanciest dog. <laughs> <laughs> on my left is the Mr. Universe of news commentators and panel <laughs> moderators, Mr. John Charles Daly. <laughs> Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to What's My Line. Once again tonight, <coughs> some very nice people have come to see us, and they brought with them some very nice occupations. The kind, I think, that'll give the panel a bit of trouble, and uh, also, we trust, give our guests uh, some prizes to take home. We'll also have a famous guest challenger before the panel a bit later in the program, but now it's time for the experts to meet our first challenger whose job they've got to spot. So would you sign in, please, ma'am? Myrtle... Dobit, is that right? Uh, is it Miss or Mrs.? Mrs. Mrs. Dobit, and where are you from? Elkhorn, Wisconsin. Elkhorn, Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. Well, it's nice to have you with us. We don't have people from Wisconsin very often, and uh, actually, I think it's a good idea for the panel to know you a bit better. Then, would you walk down in front of the panel for me, please? Well, Mrs. Dobit. Hi. Hello. Welcome to New York. <laughs> All right, Mrs. Dobit, if you'll come over here now, please, and sit down next to me. As you may know, at this point, on the basis of this brief acquaintanceship that has been established between yourself and the panel, we give them one free guess as to what your line may be, and we always begin the free guesses with Miss Kilgallen. I think Mrs. Dobit makes American-type Swiss cheese. American-type <laughs> Swiss cheese. Mr. Allen. I think Mrs. Donut runs a Dobert shop. <laughs> Miss Francis. I think Mrs. Dobert... Uh, operates a uh, wonderful hand laundry. Mr. Sir. I think Mr. Dobit works for that wonderful Jones, Wisconsin pork sausage company. No, I'm afraid nobody has it. We'll let our viewers have a further look at Mrs. Dobit. At the same time, we'll tell them what her line is. <laughs> all right, uh, <clears throat> panel, uh, you're all set. And Mrs. Dobit, I think you probably know the rules. Every time you get a no answer out of the panel, Cost them five dollars. We keep a record of all that right up here. Ten no's and you've won the game. Mrs. Dobit is salaried. With that, uh, let's begin the general questioning with Bennett Surf. Mrs. Dobit, you look like a husky, good outdoors girl to me. Do you do most of your work outside the house? Yes, I do. Uh, would it by any chance be anything to do with a farm? Sometimes. Uh, if it is sometimes connected with a farm, has it anything to do with any kind of animals? No. One down and nine to go, Miss Kilgallen. Do you by any chance work for a non-profit making organization? No. Two down and eight to go, Mr. Allen, or the hip kid. <laughs> do you ever do your work indoors? No. We hope not. Three down and seven to go, Miss Francis. <laughs> Does your work have anything to do with the land in any way, growing things or soil? Uh, no. No, not... No. Don't grow Not in there. those terms, not I wouldn't say. Terms. No. Four down and six to go, Mr. Sir. Well, Mrs. Delbert, let me try it in a new direction. Does the product with which you are engaged have anything to do with food of any kind? No. That makes it five down and five to go, Miss Kilgallen. Do you have a new direction you'd like to try? <laughs> <laughs> I just haven't any direction at all. Uh, 
have we established that there's a product involved in what Mrs. Dilbert does? Well, we will admit to the presence of product, yes. Thank you. One yes, anyway. Uh, is this a product? No, I'll withdraw that. Do you perform some type of services? Yes. And your services involve a product, is that right? Yes. Is it a product that would be used by both men and women? Uh, uh, yes, we could say it's used by both men and women. Uh, is it uh, a pleasant kind of product? Is it a pleasant kind of product? Well, I like it. <laughs> <laughs> I think, uh, Mrs. Dober, that understanding the uh, way the question was asked in its terms of reference, I will flip a card on that one. Huh? Six down and four to go, Mr. Allen. Do you wear any kind of uh, special apparel when doing your work? Just work clothes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> sounds special enough, I guess. Uh, do you ever get uh, soiled? Do you get your hands dirty when you work, ever? Yes. That's too bad. <laughs> Do you work with any kind of an implement in your hand? Yes. A, a tool, could you call it? Sometimes, but not at all times. Mm-hmm. Is yours a, an out-and-out -out mechanical job, something that perhaps a man might ordinarily do? Well, we would admit uh, a large area of truth in that final statement, yes. <laughs> Rather sorry to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, is your product Smaller than a bread box? Yes. Is it smaller than a loaf of bread? Yes. So far, all I know is you beat a loaf of bread with the pliers. I don't know. <laughs> is it smaller than a large cake of soap? What is your idea of a large cake of soap? Let's see if I brought one with me. <laughs> no, like a family size. Uh... Did you say, is it smaller than a large cake of soap? That's what I said. That'll make it seven down and three to go, <laughs> Miss Preston. Is this product ever found on or near water? On or near water is it ever found? I would say it's found on or near water, wouldn't you? Yeah. Does water have anything to do with this product? Sometimes. Oh, I led my... Oh, now, just a minute now, the John. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Dober sometimes mixes it with water, whatever it is. Well, actually, it, I would say this, that its proximity to water on some specific occasions cannot be denied, and therefore we will give you a qualified yes, and you may continue, Miss <laughs> Preston. I want to thank you loads. That's that. perfectly all right. Yeah. Is this product that you uh, discover out of doors uh, a useful one in a, uh, does it improve anything, the work that you do on this? Yes. Yeah, well, sometimes it certainly does, yeah. Do you, uh, do you clean out anything? No. No, well, wait a minute, we have a small conference. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 yeah, we'd, uh, yeah, we give you a yes on that one. Sometimes we clean out things. Uh, uh, do you uh, uh, improve the property upon which you work? Yes. Is that the... <laughs> John? Oh, yes, I buy it completely. I... You haven't been on Mrs. Dobert's property. <laughs> well, I haven't had Mrs. Dobert on my property, which is much more to the point. <laughs> to get to this product, is this uh, a product that would be found uh, around the houses of most people that own houses in the country? <laughs> no, that's eight down and two to go, and I'm going to give you one more minute, Mr. Sir. Mrs. Colbert, if you applied for membership in either the Carpenters or Plumbers Union, do you think you might be admitted? Did you say the Carpenters or the or plumbers? plumbers? Yeah. That'll make it nine down. One of the one two, to one of the two. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Gilgallan. Now, you have said, John, that uh, this is an unpleasant product. Mrs. Dobert likes it, and you can't blame her for liking what she does, but you don't like it, is that it? Well, I'd say this, that uh, if somebody wished to make me a gift of it, I would probably refuse it. <laughs> is it uh, in the very nature of this product to be unpleasant in some way, like smelly or unattractive looking? Well, I would say that it's a part of its rather com complex personality that it is an unpleasant product to most people for a very good reason. Have we... Hmm? Do you... There has been no call for a conference, Ms. Preston. Have we established whether or not... The, the, we've established that this is not animals. 
Haven't we? Well, I don't believe we established much of anything in that area. <laughs> yes, we did. Yes, we, we got a new one. We established it wasn't animal. Hmm? Yes, we've established it was not animals. Is that right? Mm -hmm. All right. Is this then an inanimate object that you have something to do with? Is it at all dangerous? It's inanimate. Is it what? Can it be dangerous? Dangerous? Could be. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, is it uh, anything that makes a noise when it goes off? Make a noise? Yeah, I guess it makes noise. Does it have any uh, explosive properties? Yes. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, about the size of a cake of soap? Well, we have said that it was uh, not as small as it. Would it... this ever be used in warfare? Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, is it um, in the sort of nitroglycerin family rather than, uh, well, an absolute little bullet or anything? It must be bigger than a bullet, isn't <laughs> well, it? Well, I would say it's in the family, probably. Is yeah. it uh, anything related to dynamite? Yeah. Do you have something to do with dynamite? Yes. A motherly looking woman like you. <laughs> That's Mar Barker, I think. <laughs> yeah, Marilyn Monroe, Monroe still of find out. <laughs> well, what she does about, uh, well, she's salary. Do you sell dynamite? No, that's ten down and no more to go, but you deserve a medal, all of you, because this was a tough one, because Mrs. Dobin is a lady dynamiter. She yeah. goes oh. out, fixes it, and starts pushing, plugging, all kinds of things. Oh, I should have gotten that, because she does Well, Mrs. Dobin. I was very pleased to see that you have won the full prize. May we also say it's been a lot of fun having you as a guest. Thanks for coming to visit us and watch my life. Thank you very much. All right, panel, let's see what we can do with another challenger. Would you sign in, please, ma'am? I don't like this. Jean. Net. <laughs> De Hunt. Is that right? It's Mrs. DeHaan panel, and where are you from? St. Petersburg, Florida. St. Petersburg, Florida. Well, that is a long way away, so you don't mind a short journey. And you have some friends. Would you take a walk down in front of the panel? Well, All right, fine. Now, Mrs. DeHaan, if you come here and sit next to me, we will go into uh, our traditional next move, which is to give the panel one free guess as to what your line may be. And we always begin the free guesses with Miss Kilgallen. Society editor. Society editor, Mr. Allen. She looks to me like a printer. Miss Francis. Psychiatrist. Mr. Sir. President of the Garden Club of St. Petersburg. No, nobody has it. We'll let our viewers have a further look at Mrs. DeHaan at the same time. We'll tell them what her line is. But the panel's got to get... <laughs> All right, Mrs. DeHaan, I think you know the rules. Every no answer across the panel, and we keep the record here. Ten no's, and you've won the game. All right, Mrs. DeHaan is salaried, and let's begin with a hip kid, Steve Allen. <laughs> Mrs. DeHaan, do you deal in any kind of a service? Yes. Are there other women who could do what you do? Yes. Uh, to try to limit that to some extent, could Arlene do what you do? Yes. You think I'm nothing. No. <laughs> Mass confidence. <laughs> uh, the next logical question then might be, does what you do have to do with men? Yes. Nothing logical? personal, Arlene. Just to... I can do it then, I think. <laughs> <laughs> do these men... Uh, do they have anything in common, outside of the fact that they're all men, I mean? Yes. Mm -hmm. Could, uh, w would you rate them, very loosely speaking, as uh, perhaps uh, rather good-looking? Very loosely. Very loosely? Well, yes. I guess, yeah. <clears throat> very loosely, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think I loosened it up just in time. <laughs> Uh, let's see, they're all men, they're rather good. Does the place where you work ever have any uh, music or entertainment or anything remotely of that nature? Yes. Around in it? It does. Are these men, these good-looking men at this place, are they, do they ever dance? Are they ever called upon to dance? Oh, I would think so, wouldn't you? Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, let me see. The men who are good-looking and are called upon to dance, uh, do they ever wear something other than street clothes? Yes. <laughs> Actually, I think that's being a little bit unfair to Mrs. DeHaan, because I think what Mrs. DeHaan has in mind is that we all get into our pajamas sometimes in 24 hours and go to bed, but I think the way you asked the question was uh, one that would deserve a no answer. Oh. So that makes it one down and nine to go, Miss Francis. 
You've got to know because they always do wear their street clothes. Is well, they're normal, yes, yes normal attire is... Uh, is there anything the therapeutic about your work? Pardon, I didn't hear that. Does your work help these men? You mean in the therapeutic sense? Well, I mean to uh, be either goodwill or make them feel better spiritually or emotionally, the job that you have? I hope so. <laughs> uh, is it a... a, a, a is there any product whatsoever involved in this service that you... No. Know? Two down and eight to go, Mr. Seth. Mrs. DeHaan, would these men that you deal with by any chance ever be in the armed services of the United States? Yes. At the time of their service, you mean? Are, are, are they in uniform sometimes when you have uh, dealings with them? We'll have a small conference if you don't mind. Actually, we've had a very difficult session, Bennett. I must tell you that um, the question as you pose it is, would they be in uniform when, in effect, they made use of the service which um, it has been elicited? When, Mrs. when they come to Mrs. DeHaan. That would make it three down and seven to go. Thank you very <laughs> Thank much. you very much. <laughs> Miss Kilgallen. Mrs. DeHaan, do the men who uh, use your services, as Bennett put it, ever use them involuntarily? Do they ever come to you unwillingly? Hmm. No. I wouldn't think so. Four down and six to go, and I'm going to give you one more minute, Mr. Allen. That means it's not a draft board, in other words. No, I wasn't thinking of that. I was thinking of something even worse. Oh, well, I'll see you later. <laughs> uh, is it the other end of the deal, then? Are they veterans with whom you deal? No. Five down and five to go, Miss Francis. Is the, this place, or wherever your job is, is it a, a club of any kind? No. Or... Or what? Or a place like, uh, you know, a Turkish bath, even, where all men... <laughs> <laughs> Six down and four to go, Mrs. and that Dunn. minute is up, Pedal. Mrs. I'm Dunn, going to default uh, on the basis of time. Well, her voice is so uh, cultivated and trained. I wonder if you have anything to do with the entertainment world. Now, that would make it seven down and three to go, <laughs> and the time is up. Because actually, you were all around it, but never quite on the spot, because Mrs. DeHana is a fraternity house mother at the University Isn't of Florida. Well, oh, I'm waiting God. for you... That's why I let you go on and get the Turkish bath in. Would you I say just Turkish threw that in, in because I, you gave me sort of an off on club, John. I was thinking about a man. Well, then you club. throw me in the Turkish bath. <laughs> no, I mean, throw me in the club. <laughs> all right, Mrs. DeHaan, you win the full prize by default, and it's been fun having you as a guest. Nice Thank of you, you to come all the way from Florida. <laughs> and now, in just a moment, ladies and gentlemen, we'll introduce our mystery guest, but first, here's the inside story of a great success. Only once in a blue moon comes a product like Finesse, the new flowing cream shampoo created by the noted cosmetic chemist, Dr. Jules Montagnier. Women everywhere are turning to Finesse because here at last is a shampoo that's sympathetic to the skin and hair. Finesse attracts dust and grime like a magnet, but leaves vital beauty-giving oils, awakens the life in your hair as it washes out the dirt. And finesse is so convenient, clean so easily, that men too want finesse. Oh, but no harm done. The finesse bottle is unbreakable and it can't spill. No wonder everyone likes this amazing accordion squeeze bottle. The captive cap is part of the bottle, flips open, closes at a touch. One hand does it. And the man in your family will like the way finesse flows on, lathers instantly. Finesse is extra concentrated, requires only one lathering. Yes, for you women who know the importance of healthy, cared-for hair, and for you men who like a quick, easy, stimulating shampoo, get Finesse. At your drug or cosmetic counter, get the cream shampoo that flows on. Yes, Finesse. Now we come to the special feature of our program, the appearance of our mystery celebrity. Our friends in the panel would, as usual, know who was here by sight, so we have had to, as usual, give them blindfolds. Are they all in place, panel? Yes, sir. Yes. Good. Will you come in, mystery challenger, and sign in, please? Panel, as you know, in the case of our mystery celebrity, we dispense with all usual preliminaries, get right down to the general questioning, which uh, we will begin with, uh, well, let's see, Arlene Francis. Well, judging from the applause, I take it that you are a performer? Uh, da, da, ja, ja, that's <laughs> right. 
Uh, that kind of a performer. Uh, would you consider yourself a leading man? Rather. <laughs> and are you, have you appeared in pictures? Yeah, 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 yeah. Are you best known for your performances in pictures? As opposed to the theater? Well, I'm sure, and I think she's right there. I think it would be. I, I think so, too. Yeah. Have you got just one head? There are so many <laughs> <laughs> dialects. It is just one person? Yabo. Yeah, <laughs> and um, are you associated with one particular studio? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm not to go, Mr. Sir. Have you ever done any work on television and radio? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, when you do perform, do you do anything at all of a musical nature? Holy Toledo, no. <laughs> no? Go down and eight to go. <laughs> Miss Gilgallon. Oh, uh, have you done serious, dramatic parts in pictures? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Despite all the uh, funny voices and everything, are you good-looking and uh, uh, considered a dreamboat type by the girls? Well, uh, you have your answer there, Miss Dorothy. Um, ooh, I'm torn. Um, <laughs> I've got some scotch tape. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Steve. Uh, I think I'm going to need it. Uh, were you ever in a picture with Ann Sheridan? Uh, yeah. Were you ever in a picture where uh, a terrible operation was performed on you when, while the camera was on you? Well, I don't like her. <laughs> 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 I think yes is the answer to that. Mr. Was it King's Row? Yeah. Are you Ronald Reagan? Ronald Reagan is right. <laughs> Challenger gets ready to sign in. Just a brief reminder that if you would like to appear on What's My Line and try to puzzle the panel with your occupation, simply send us your picture, a small snapshot that you can spare, your name, occupation, address, and when you expect to be in New York, and send this information to What's My Line, CBS, 485 Madison Avenue, New York, 22 New York. And now let's see what the panel can do with another challenger. Will you sign in, please, sir? Jim? Jim Young, is that right, sir? <laughs> First of all, would you tell us where you're from? I'm from Mentor, Ohio. Mentor, Ohio. Mentor, Ohio. Well, you've got some friends in the house, so uh, just relax and enjoy yourself. Now, we're running a little bit short of time, so I would ask you just to walk down in front of the panel, turn right around and walk back again, would you please? <laughs> all right, Mr. Young, right in here, <laughs> if you will, next to me, and I think you know that this is the point where we give the panel one free guess. We always begin the free guesses with Dorothy Kilgallen. I think he's a goat farmer. A goat farmer, Mr. Allen. I think he's a uh, private eye. Ms. Vance. I think he's a physicist. Mr. Sir. I think Mr. Young makes Young's hats. No, I'm afraid not. We'll let our viewers have a further look at Mr. Young. At the same time, we will tell them what his line is. But the panel has to guess. All right, Mr. Young, we've got everything cleaned up here and ready to go. You know what happens. Every no answer, we'll rick up right here, rack up here. Ten no's, you've won the game. Mr. Young is uh, self-employed. With that, let's begin the general questioning with Miss Kilgallen. Uh, is there any product involved in what you do, Mr. Uh, Young? Yes, ma'am. Is it a useful product? Yes, ma'am. Is it something I might have in my house? Yes, ma'am. Uh, is it uh, something that I could have in more than one room in the house? No, ma'am. No, I actually, uh, to be specific, you could, but <laughs> you wouldn't like it if you did. That's one down and nine to go, Mr. Allen. In a two-story home, would it ordinarily be downstairs? Oh. Well, uh, well, I would think Mr. Young would agree that if it were in a home, it's more likely it would be downstairs than upstairs, wouldn't you? I would say so. Yeah. All right, Mr. Allen? And it's not something that would be used in the kitchen. Uh, would it ever be used around the dining room? 
I don't think so. Either. I shouldn't think so. That would hardly be the place for it. Two down and eight to go, Miss Francis. Would this be used places other than a home? Yes. Uh, uh, is this product something uh, that is uh, uh, that you can uh, use as uh, a piece of furniture? Is there anything useful about it in that regard? <clears throat> no, it's a piece of furniture. I think we would not call it a piece of furniture. That's three down and seven to go, Mr. Sir. Mr. Young, has this product ever been, or is it now, when you touch it alive? No. That's four down and six to go, Miss Kilgallen, and we've is got it, about a minute to go. Is it solid rather than liquid? Yes, ma'am. We have determined that it is not found in the kitchen and not found in the dining room. It, it, we have determined that actually, if it were found in a home, it would lot more likely be on the first floor than the second floor, well, and I think that um, is Alan this, raised the point of the kitchen. Is this something that you could do without in your home? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. yes. Certainly. Is it larger than a bread box? Yes, ma'am. <coughs> is it um, larger than a radio? Uh, well, you have some big radios. <laughs> uh, I would say probably, wouldn't you? Larger uh, than a table radio, let's say. Uh, yes, ma'am. Does it have moving parts? No, ma'am. No moving parts. Five down and five to go, Mr. Allen. It is not an appliance, then, of any kind. Yes, it is not an appliance of any kind, no. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hmm. Is there metal in any of its parts? Metal, did you say? Yes. Six down and four to go. Miss Francis, time for about one question. Is the wood in any of its parts? No, ma'am. Seven so down and we... three to go, and our time is up. This was a real tough one. Mr. Young is a bird a bop a salesman. It's made out of clay, <laughs> concrete. <laughs> and Mr. Young... Mr. Young has asked, he's won the full prize, and he's asked that we send his prize money to the National Foundation for Infantile Paralysis, which we will do, and thanks very much for being our guest. Now, in just a moment, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to give you a preview look at one of our guests whose line our panel is going to be asked to try and identify on next week's program. But first, here's a man's angle on an everyday subject. Oh, sorry, Wall. It's all right, nothing broken. They don't tell me a big he-man like you uses a deodorant. Not a deodorant, Dan. Stop that spray deodorant. And there's nothing sissy about it. Ah, go on. Listen, it isn't only heat that makes us perspire. Excitement will do it, too. Pressure of business. Any kind of tension. Yes, but does this really work on men? Yeah, doggone right it does. That's why I like Stop Bet. It's not only a deodorant, but it's an antiperspirant, too. An anti-what? I mean, it actually gets rid of perspiration all day. That's really important. Don't, mm. not like that, like this. Just hold the bottle straight up, give it a quick squeeze, just one, and it lasts all day long. Say, hey, that's all right. It's easy to use, isn't it? Nothing to stick your fingers into either, and it dries just like that. Say, Walt, can I borrow this? Sure, just put it in my locker after you've finished, and uh, pick some up for yourself on the way home. Thanks, Walt. Poof, there goes perspiration. And next week, at this same time, our panel of experts will be asked, what's my line by this man? Would you know what his occupation is? Could you spot his line? Well, for the answers to these and a lot of other questions, and we hope a lot of fun. Be sure to tune in again next Sunday at 10.30 p.m. Eastern Daylight Saving Time, when once again, we invite you to play What's My Line. For other localities, check your local listings for the date and time of our weekly series. Until we see you again, this is John Daly saying good night, Dorothy. Steve, you should have gotten that last contestant. You're with the birds. <laughs> Strictly four, as a matter of fact. Incidentally, I'm very sad to tell you that our lady dynamiter has been arrested for dynamiting a lady. Good night, Arlene. <laughs> good night. <laughs> good night, Mr. Universe. And good night, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for being with us on What's My Life? <laughs> this has been a Mark Goodson, Bill Codman production. In association with the CBS Television Network. Don Hollenbeck reports Sundays on the CBS Television Network.